Okay, so uh, I'm back and hopefully so are you. Um, just here basically to have a nice chat uh, about things, uh, not quite sure. Uh, I have a little bit of a sniffles today, so my voice uh, would obviously sound a little bit different and slightly nasally, but uh, be that as it may. Um, just, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Uh, the body doesn't really recover as well as it should or as fast as it should the, the older you get. And that's one of the things that I've discovered lately, you know, I, I actually, I actually like getting older. Um, there's a couple of things about it that I like, and there's a couple of things that I don't like about it. First of all, getting older um, it leaves you a bit unprepared. I don't think uh, people really warn you enough about you know getting older, and they really should be. And perhaps I stand corrected. I'm sure there are millions of books worldwide available, uh, you know, to help prepare you for getting older. But I think uh, I think it's more in what I'm looking for is more in society and a, a discussion around those taboos. I mean, not that getting older is a taboo, but I think there should be so much more discussions between parents or older or elderly people and younger people to help to help guide them to that process. Um, in my case, I suppose, perhaps, and again, yeah, I stand corrected, perhaps these discussions are taking places in homes around the world um, and in South Africa. But I found, uh, first of all, with my parents, I lost them when I was very young, so there was not uh, really an opportunity for me to engage with them on these subject matters. I've been without my parents longer than I was with them in my lifetime. Um, but I would say even amongst all the older and elderly people around me at the time growing up and growing older, they, we never really got to talk about what it, what it is like to get older, what happens when you get older and how it will make you feel. And I, you know, today, it's, it's so much more important. We now, I suppose that our uh, coming of age, excuse the pun, has come that we realize there's so much power that we have as an adult to influence a child or a teenager or to help guide and shape who that person is going to become. And I suppose in my case, um, uh, not having had the parents to help uh, get me there. I'm quite pleased with the way that I've turned out. Um, uh, but on the other hand, you know, not having any children hasn't afforded me the opportunity to, to, to help guide them or to help shape them. But I think that every day what I do and what I say, I take responsibility for it completely. And I am very much aware and I have always been aware of the power that I have as an adult over children and the influence that I can have over what I say and do in their presence. Um, but getting back to the fact that, you know, people don't talk about certain things and people don't talk about taboo subjects like either sex. Yes, in, uh, you know, in, in my community, sex, we talked about sex, but usually at school, you know, and amongst each others and paging through the, you know, the certain uh, books. Uh, that's how we learned about sex. But, you know, nobody came and sat you down and said, listen, we need to have a serious talk. You know, there's some things happening out there that you need to know about. Not that that is perhaps, you know, something that I would have listened to at the time, because like any teenager, we know they don't listen. We never listened. And that is just the way things are. So I, I suppose, you know, you've got to hope that whatever you say as an adult, you keep saying it consistently, um, honestly, and truthfully, and then hope that one day it sits there and, and you know, it'll make sense to them. Because let's face it, no one, none, none of us listen to whatever our parents has to say, because at the time of our development and our emotional uh, development, um, we're not ready to hear certain things. Um, and now at this age, um, I'm in that, you know, position where I am um, giving advice and hoping that uh, this advice will be adhered to. But Growing old is a beautiful process. Growing older is an amazing process. Your body just changes. Your needs change. What you want for yourself, what you want for others is completely different for me personally to what it was 10 years ago, to what it was 5 years ago, to what it was 15 and 20 years ago. You know, uh, 20 years ago, when you went on vacation, you know, what you wanted to do was do as many things as possible and just cram it in that vacation that you have. Do as much as possible. Now, my idea of an ideal vacation is to do as little as possible. And that's absolutely true. Growing older is, you know, it's about wearing glasses. You saw my other two videos, I was wearing spectacles. 
15 years ago, I had a friend that was 15 years older than me. And whenever we went out to restaurants, the first thing she used to do is reach out for her glasses and she had to read the menu. And I laughed and chuckled at it every time she did this because that was our thing. She'd reach for the glasses. I chuckled because I had no idea. I have no, why would she need that? I would grab the glasses and go, I can't see. Now I understand because not the eyes, they get older. There's no way that you can tell a teenager or 25 or 30 year old with perfect 2020 vision that you are gonna need glasses, just wait. That wait might be 15 years down the line. So in that 15 years, they don't have a clue. So yes, I'm at the age now where I discover, oh, I, I, I totally by accident, I would read and things would appear fine. But suddenly my eyes started paining or started blurring, etc., etc. And I find that with the pair of spectacles that helps clear, oh my God, look at that. You know, the font, as you guys would call it, would go from a 0.8 font on any given Roman times numeral, on a 0.8 font, it would go up to 0.14. That's how clear and how clear your vision becomes with a pair of spectacles. But you can't explain this to someone who, I mean, I was one of those. I laughed at my friend 15 years ago. Now I guess I got some of my younger people laughing at me. And so the wheel turns, you know. It's wonderful. I mean, getting older is amazing. So as I said, a couple of things about that is that your body doesn't quite recover the way it did. Uh, doesn't come quite as fast as it, as it used to because a cold now or a fever or possibly a cut in my hand would take up to five days to heal uh, or six or seven days because the body is just older. The cells are older. To regenerate takes longer. And I appreciate that. And I now understand it. So again, all of us, we fear what we don't understand. We uh, don't understand, so we don't relate. And I think it's so wonderful when it all falls into place as an understanding, both for myself personally, it's wonderful. I've embraced all of this. You know, one of the best lessons for me has been um, I've tried to stop pleasing people. I've always wanted to be a people, I've always, I've, I've always been a people pleaser. I loved, pe I did it because, for the love of it. I do everything for the love of it. I have a job right now which I absolutely adore. I love it. I'm one of the few people that can say, I love what I do. I love going to work. I love being there. Um, but one of the things that I just all of a sudden epiphany for me now the other day, it came as a thought. I verbalized it and of course I put it on social media and I says, I no longer care about pleasing people. And for me, that was such a powerful epiphany. And uh, to some, it might seem, um, what does that mean? Don't you want to please people anymore? Don't you? Want no, it's not as selfish. It's not selfish in any way when I say that I no longer care about pleasing people. What it just means is that I won't go out of my way to try and please someone because this then certainly is just a one-way journey. If I'm going to try and please this one or try and please that one, where do I fit in that equation? But it's not about that either. And when my epiphany came, my epiphany came, I no longer care about pleasing people. I care about pleasing my maker. And perhaps I didn't, I didn't verbalize the second part of it because it would have put a religious context to it and maybe there's those others that uh, wouldn't have liked the religious aspect of it. So I thought, I, for those who are interested to know, I am no longer interested in pleasing people. What you see is what you get. And if you know me, you'll know what you get. If you don't know me, you can learn to get to know me. But about pleasing you, that's not my job. It is my job to keep you entertained, hopefully keep you hooked in, hooked on, and hopefully you like what I say. So tune in again next time for a new video. And all I ask is that you keep watching and I'll see you on the other side.